I'm sharing something with you from the prophetic day with for today. And uh, in 1 Samuel 2. So if you can go with me to 1 Samuel 2, uh, take a note or two or three, write down in your Bible, write somewhere. And uh, let's go with what we believe God has for us. We see this woman, Hannah. Hannah in prayer. Hannah in such a level of prayer that when when the priest saw her, he thought she was drunk. She was drunk. You know, my brother, my sister, we can be in very um, uh, nice prayer. And yes, every prayer from the heart, yes, that's unto the Lord. But I think God is challenging us to get into a place, some of the words, translations will call it supplication. I'm not talking about moaning and groaning before the Lord in the sense of throwing a tantrum. Uh uh. Not like that. But a prayer where there's an intense focus into that, what has to do with the birthing. I know it's bordering into intercession. But still, this woman was so intensely in this that even this priest thought, hey, she's just drunk, man. Religion will call you drunk. Religion will try to, to say, shh, 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 shh. Oh, no, 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 stop this, stop this, stop this. When you go more and more into a certain intensity with prayer. Intensity with prayer. So we see the people, some were blind, some were lame. When they screamed out unto the Lord, when they called out unto him, what did the disciples do? Shh, 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 shh. When the children made, made a lot of noise. And shh, 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 shh. When they cried out, Hosanna in the highest. The disciples said to them to be quiet. And Jesus said, if they don't cry out, the, the stones will. There's an intensity, my brother, my sister, in this season that God wants from you. So that there will be a focus. And you know, in prayer, you can pray a lot of stuff, but your head, your thoughts, your heart can be in so many different places. So many different places. There was a stage in my life, uh, 24 years ago, when uh, we recorded the CD. Uh, we have the songs that we wrote in, in those days. I want to praise you, Lord, say through my life, all of those songs. We did it, everything... Up to the point where I had to just record the voice. And then suddenly, in the practicing of a play that we wanted to do, Christ the Champion, speaking a lot every day, like 12, 14 hours for a week or two, suddenly my voice was gone. Went to the specialist, and they said, the doctor said, for a whole month, you're not allowed to say one word. Hallelujah. And you know, in that time, in that time, God challenged me about what is the words from my heart? What is the worship from the heart? And I was shocked with how easily your heart and your mind can be distracted and think other stuff. Because with our mouths, we can sing a song, but my thoughts are there, my heart is there. And my words are there unto the Lord. That's not what God wants. Are you with me? I challenge you, maybe go for a one or two or three or a week uh, of no speaking. And see what will happen in you. So God challenged me a lot about my heart and where it must come from my heart. I mean, 1 Samuel 2. That's why when I say this, I want to go to this verse. Oh, I say no. Verse 30. Five. God says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. You can do according to what the word says. You can be under the law and you know, I'm not allowed to do this and I'm allowed to do that. And, and because in my Christian walk, I must stop this and I must do this. And that is okay. But that is not according to what is in God's heart and what is in his mind. 
The Muslim can decide, I will not beat up my wife. And it's good. It's according to God's will. But to do what is in his heart and in his mind, he needs a relationship with the child. A relationship with the son. Where the heart of the child and the heart of the father are together. Hello? Well, that is what God wants. It's not to do what is right and what is wrong. Even at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you can find that. Hello? But God is looking for a people that will do according to what is in his heart. Why this, Lord? We see in Romans 12 too, we must be renewed in our mind. Hello? Through the word of God. Everybody do this. Okay. This is a little bit cuckoo. Come to me. <laughs> Unless I is renewed. So that what? So that what? You can see what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. It is good not to steal. But what is the pleasing? What is the heart of God in this? He wants his children to be blessed. In the sense, he doesn't want anybody to steal from you. He doesn't want anybody to take, talk nonsense about you. Give false testimony. Doesn't want anybody to destroy you. Thou shalt not kill. Hello. He wants you that they will not be jealous on you when he, God blesses you. Amen. You will not cover this. Your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's this, your neighbor's jaguar, your neighbor's whatever. Are you with me? So in all of that, can I see the heart of God? That is so important. God is looking for someone. In that way, I want to I want to run to an example. You know, some of you guys have done some perspective, and this teaching of an hour or two or three, I'm quickly going to do in 15 minutes. So I need a priest, a prophet, and a king. Oh boy, one, one, one. No, no, you can take notes. It's 100. percent Thank you. One, one, one. We will have. Sorry, thank you. You look more like, ooh, like King's, not King Saul, but, but okay, King. King. <laughs> king. And uh, Prophet, oh, don't be nailed like a priest. <laughs> okay. My brother, uh, start off the play with the you have to. Well, God, we find, we find God with Israel. He hear there, cry. Hello? He hear, he heard the intensity of their cry in this situation. God wants to take you out of that place of slavery. To do what? To inherit what God has promised you, the land Canaan. All the promises that he gave you through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to bless you, to have an excellent destiny, to have a lot of things that God just wants to bless you with. Uh, I'm not so sure. But in Israel, God came to Moses and said, I've heard the cry of my people. My brother, my sister, you want certain things to change, to come in line with God's word. Let there be intensity in your life with a focus in your prayer. That from the heart. It was an effort in that month where I couldn't speak. An effort to get this heart to focus on every line of a worship song. It was a struggle. To focus with my heart and hear my heart singing that song, those words, my mind focusing on those words. It was quite something. There's an intensity from your heart needed so that God can take you out of your Egypt. And God said to Moses, I will be there. I am who I am. You'll see who I am. And then God showed Moses who he is. And the people said, whoa. And the fear came on the, on the heathen nations. And the fear of God came on his people. A respect that said, I have the guts. I will definitely go with Moses. I will follow him. And as he brought them to the mountain, God could give him just the law. But no, God shared first his heart. God wants you to do according to what is in his heart. Everybody, heart. So if God wants you to hear his heart, first of all, when you come out of your Egypt, out of the bondage, out of the fear, out of the stress, out of the anxiety, out of circumstantial reactions, 
out of your own opinions and fights in your heart. When you're getting out of that place, he's bringing you to Canaan. No, he's bringing to unto himself. We find Exodus 19, where God said, when he came and he shared his heart with his nation, and he said, I've taken you out of Egypt, and I've brought you unto myself on eagle's wings. On eagle's wings, with no effort. You had no effort in the fact that I brought you unto myself. If God will be your focus in everything you do, you will just see how God will open the doors so that you can come into the place where he is. I brought you unto myself on eagle's wings. And then he said to them, you are my special people. He imparted identity. You are my special people. A kingdom of priests. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. It's only in the New Testament that Peter said, to the New Testament church. You are a kingdom of priests. A holy nation. We are all living stones in the, in the spiritual house of God. No, 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 no. It wasn't just there. It's the same God in the Old Testament. Hello? Saying, you are my special people. So the moment he had them out of Egypt. He wanted to share his heart as a father. He wanted to share his heart. The last thing he will say before. Hundreds of years before Jesus. Come, he said. Hearts of the fathers to the children, children to the fathers. Malachi 4, 6. Your heart unto the Lord. God said, you are my special people. I've brought you to myself. And then Moses went on the mountain. And when he came back and the people saw all the things happening. You look at your circumstances. You look at a lot of things that happened. My brother, you could look at there where God is and you could say, whoa. Because you couldn't understand who he is. And God said, you're my, you're my special people. I brought you to myself. Why? When they saw all the stuff that happened, they said, whoa, no, 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 no. I don't want God so close. He said, they said to Moses, don't let God speak to me. Don't let God speak to us as a nation. Let God speak to you and you speak to us. But don't let God speak to us. Are you with me? My brother, in circumstances and situations, you can come into that place by saying, don't let God speak to me. How will you say that? But just decide, I'm sitting with my negativity. I will hear the voice of negativity, the voice of depression, the voice of issues, the voice of immature rubbish, whatever, the temptation, what, the voice of success, the voice of, if I have that, then I will. If I have that, then I will. And the right and wrong of situations. And I can be intimate with all those voices. And in that place, I say, I don't want to hear God's voice. You never said it. But you chose the other voices. Are you with me? And in this place, and then, there's a one word, a discipline. A discipline that God wants to bring. A discipline that God wants to bring. And Moses said to the to the, to the nation. Don't fear. This is Exodus 19. Don't fear because God wants you to deal with the sin. God wants you to deal with the rubbish. So that you can come close to him. Remember what God said. You are my special people. I've brought you on eagle's wings unto myself. Are you with me? Is he limit me? No, no, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping you up here. Bottom line, so when that happened, they said, no, 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 no. We, not the priest in his presence. The biggest blessing is to walk before his presence. That was Samuel in 1 Samuel 2. The, the, the son, the boy grew up in his presence. He grew in wisdom. He grew in the stature, in favor with God, favor with man. That's what we see in Luke 2, 52. Same was said about Jesus, how he grew also in stature. Favor with God, favor with man, wisdom. Are you with me? Yeah. And so this man, he was under that discipline, under that discipline, Samuel. But when coming back to the situation, Moses says, don't fear, God is disciplining you. My brother, my sister, and discipline is not lacquer. Discipline is not nice. But I need to hear God's heart in it. The nation said, no, 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 no. They said, come here, priest. 
Moses and the priestly order, you between us and God. That priestly order was put there because the nation said no. So there must be a priestly order that will go in his presence because we not going in his presence. We not having a life in his presence. We not having a prayer life, not having a place where we understand how to walk before, before him who he is. Uh, are you with me? And suddenly there's a priestly order. Now in this book we see, chapter 2, 1 Samuel 2, we talk about there's a priest, Eli, that thought Hannah was like a chesep. Hannah was uh, drunk. <laughs> but you know how to get the nation further away from God is make sure a pattern is not placed in their lives. A pattern is not established in them. We call that discipleship. Make sure that there's not a pattern. The flesh call it a law. All these laws, all these stuff that we're not allowed to do or allowed to do. The word says, if you love me, then you'll obey my teaching. When your heart is in it, it's great. Heart is not in it. It's good, but it's not from God. Uh, hello? You with me? And so, what must, the, what must hell and the enemy do? Make sure that this man cannot bring discipline to the next generation. To the next generation. The next generation must not receive discipline. Must not receive the pattern for destiny. So that they're going to die in the desert. With no purpose. They couldn't find their purpose because they couldn't find the pattern. They couldn't take the pattern so they didn't understand the purpose. They say, I must take the pattern to understand the purpose. Are you with me? So yeah, Mr. Eli, he didn't give the pattern to his children. In this chapter 2, he says a few places. Oh man, let me go quickly. The son of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight. That is the sons of Eli. For they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. Samuel was menacing, but Samuel, but Samuel was menacing before the Lord. The dad would say, he said to them, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, I report. The report I hear spreading among the Lord's people is not good. Oh, you can hear preaching three million sermons. You can hear mom and dad. You can hear people. You can hear your coaches. You can hear teachers saying a lot of stuff. But what a hell of a waste. If it's just talking. But he had to enforce Certain patterns. Oh, that's control. No. <laughs> you decide if your flesh will control you, if you will control yourself, if hell will control you, or if the patterns from God and the, and the, and the ways God has given us, that that will control you. So make disciples. Is, when you're going under a, under a coach, it's not, not that, not control. Coach will tell you, you eat this, you eat that. You don't sleep that time, you'll, you'll stand up this time. You'll go and do uh, eight kilometers today. No, I will first pray about that. No. You prayed that in the beginning when you decided that that's the coach. Now you submit to the coach. No, he's controlling me. You decided that he will develop what is inside of you. So you decide that the rubbish will develop you and to make rotten whatever is inside of you. Or your flesh, or the temptation, or the world, or what they say, what's the, be the newest trend, or whatever. Or you decide that the one God has given me to disciple me, I will give myself for the pattern to be formed in me. The pattern to be established so that my, my purpose will be fulfilled. Don't do that. Just but just what are the rest? Yes, go to heaven, but waste the life on earth. No, in Jesus' name. Everybody say no in Jesus' name. No, you're going to receive patterns for your purpose. Amen. But the patterns, they... They heard what they had to do. And even, you can be in Creare, you can be in this project with Marcieta, you can do all the stuff. You can work at Creare and do everything what is expected of you and bring no glory to God. There's no worship, there's no love. Nothing is acceptable and it must be burned away. All your work for 10 years, 15 years, whatever, 5 years at Creare. What you did for the Lord because you didn't receive the pattern. For how you do it as if unto the Lord. What an honor, what a privilege in what I do. What an honor, a privilege, even if I feel I want to kill one. Uh, so someone, uh, the leader. <laughs> the leader never wanted to kill somebody else, you know. 
What am I saying? Pattern. But they didn't receive the pattern from their father. Because they didn't understand the heart. When you understand the heart, you can take the pattern. If you don't understand the heart, you don't take the pattern. You just obey like a donkey, like a one that you decide in the flesh, in the flesh, I will be controlled. But the control is not by the, from that person. The control is from your flesh. And that you've experienced it in the flesh and therefore you feel suffocated and you feel this control. <sighs> but when I do it as even to the Lord, it's a different story. But no, no discipline. When there's not that discipline in your life, hell has the authority to come in. So what happens? Now, this is falling. This nation is supposed to be a priest in his presence. But there's no priestly order because the pattern was not established. Now here, no pattern is established. God is looking for someone with a focused intensity of discipline for something from God to give back unto the Lord. I will give back to you. That's the priests. Priests were given back in his presence to serve in his presence. Here's a henna. Here's a henna. And she's praying for a child. Say, this child will minister in your presence. This child will be a priest in your presence. I will take him to the high priest. And he will minister in, to the, pres in the presence of God. He will serve in the presence of God. And God is looking for such a person. And he finds it in a woman. And then suddenly, what happened? Here's Samuel. Where's the nation of God? Now between the nation of God, we find the prophet and the priest. The prophet and the priest. And this prophet, the word says, there's not a word that Samuel said that fell on the ground. Everything was fulfilled. Everything, everything, everything he said. But you know what happened? I don't know if that's the reason because he didn't, didn't see the example of how to take a pattern and put it in his children. But at the end of his life, the Samuel, the nation looked at him and said, you are going and your children, they are not serving the Lord. They are not serving the Lord. You didn't put the pattern in their lives. You couldn't disciple them. Now, because of that, we demand a king. Saul. King Saul. King Saul taking the attention on himself. Good acting. <laughs> so, what happened? God says, they've rejected me. And then the priest between the nation and God. Then the prophet between God and the nation. Then God said, they rejected me as king. They were not willing just to follow my principles. I will give him a king. Samuel, Samuel, I will give him the king. Because they rejected me as king and a king between the nation and God. This is a place where you can live. And between you and God, king, prophet, priest. But you were called to be kings, prophets, and priests in this life. Hello? And then uh, Revelation 1.6, I know you know it, that's why you're not writing it down. Revelation 1.6, we, we are called that for eternity, 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 you will rule with Christ as kings and priests. Why not as prophets? Because the prophetic is for this word to be fulfilled. When Jesus comes, every word will be fulfilled. So the prophetic, just keep that in your hand. The pro prophetic is for the word to be fulfilled. Are you with me? So for eternity, you will not rule as a prophet. No, no, no. Because that was for the season here on earth. Unto the fulfillment. But as priests and as king, so you will rule and reign for eternity, eternity, eternity. Like we said, king in the name of Jesus. Priest for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Priest looking at him. King looking with him at what's happening. Are you with me? Your authority as a king, your intimacy as a priest with God. Everybody, authority and intimacy. That needs to be established. But to get that to connect. Because you have an intimate relationship with this person. And then suddenly this person be, talks to you straight. <laughs> mm. And then I withdraw my heart. 
because authority and intimacy, I don't know how to combine it. But I need to learn how to stand in the name of Jesus against hell and to look into heaven as a priest. Hello. Are you with me? Somewhere from this place. We see that God said there in 1 Samuel 2, He's looking and He will, he will raise up the uh, one that will do according to his heart. And you know, and this is the situation in Israel, and God is longing for his people. He has a desire for you and me. He's longing for his people. And then he hears a song. It says, one thing have I desired, that I will seek, that I may search out and see the beauty in your presence, in your temple. And that man would say, yo, God, you are the good shepherd, and, and I have all these goodies. It's only been one, you lay me down, green pastures, and, and all this stuff happening, uh, my cup overflows. But then at the end of the day, after all those blessings, I will stay in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. I will live in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And he, God hears the words of a man that desires his presence. He hears David. Hello? So that in the place of Saul will come a David. Not to be king. No, 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 no. First thing Saul did was making us build a stature of himself. First thing, when David became king, he brought back the ark of the Lord to the heart of the nation in Jerusalem. It was all of, he used the authority for intimacy. God will give you stature, authority, breakthroughs, so that you can understand the intimate relationship, so that you can live in his presence. The biggest honor that you can have. Amen. Are you with me, my brother? Amen. Well, that's how God took Israel back into the place. Into that place. But today, me and you, we are called to be priests, prophets, Kings, but I can choose to live my own life. I'm not living under the authority of the word. I'm not seeing what God is doing. I don't know what is in my future. I don't understand intimacy as a priest in his presence. And here I am. My brother, where will we start then? At least then, at least, at least. If I like it or not, I will submit under the authority. Now, the, the bad thing with some of that is, when God gave now the law, when God gave the law, first of all, he shared his heart, Exodus 19, remember now, with Israel? And then chapter 20, after chapter 19, standing them, I brought you on eagle's wings to myself, to my special people, priests, priests, kingdom of priests. Then he brought the law. Today, we are not free from the law in itself. We need to find the heart of the law as a priest. So that we can see as a prophet what God has for us. And then willingly we submit and do what the, Lord, what the law is saying. But if I don't see that, the law is a curse. I'm under the law. I'm under the law. Or my heart is in the law. Well, otherwise, I'm just lawless. Lawlessness. I will just do whatever I want to hell with the rest. I call myself a Christian, but I do whatever I want. Whatever I feel, like a baboon. If a baboon feels to do this, then he do that. Donkey feels he will not move, then the donkey don't move. Oh, and the donkey will stand there, and you do like an animal. Hmm. No wonder some people... Yeah, need to move. God is wonderful. Amen. <laughs> so, so don't be a baboon. Tell your neighbor, don't be like a baboon man. No. Mach this, man. Okay. So what are we saying? What are we saying, guys? Your heart's in the law. Your life under the law. Or without the law. Without the law, not saved. In the place of being lost. You're lost. You just wara wara around. You're lost without the law. Under the law, you're under a curse because you are in the religion 
And we just must, 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 must under the law. We, God has set us free from that. But you need to see the heart of God in the law. Why did God say that? So here I, I am in this place. Where will you start? Even if you don't feel like it. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like getting into the world. I don't feel, feel like doing the right thing. If I will just at least start and shut up and submit and under the authority of the King, Lord Jesus. Because I respect him and I choose to respect him, if I like it or not, I will submit. That's it. And do the right principle. And forgive that guy. And pray for him. And Hello? Are you with me? But the more you will start to just by choice submit to the word of God. Submit to the word of God. Submit to the word of God. The more as a prophet you will start to see why. See the purposes of God. See what he sees. See what he is saying. Let's say I submit to what he is saying. Then I will see what he is saying. And when I can see what he is saying and I hear his heart, I'm drawn to his heart. And that is where I come as a priest in his presence. And that is eternal life. To know the Father and the one that he sent Jesus. John 17, 3. Hey? That is eternal life. That is what God has called you for. As a kingdom of priests. Thank you, three. Give him a hand. So my brother in that place, we need one another. Because now for some reason, God decided that you, we will submit to one another, submit to your leaders, submit husbands to your wa wives, wives to your husbands. No, husband must wa love the wife and the wife must submit. But just read three, four verses before that passage. Then he says, Submit to one another. Women, don't use it now. But it says, but that, just a few verses before that, it says, submit to one another. Ah, oh, what are we saying? May God help you, my brother, my sister, that when you walk out here, even though you feel like your flesh is screaming against it, let your flesh scream as much as it wants. Humiliate your flesh and honor the king and his word. And even it's a fight. In that place, it's a fight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will not do this in the name of Jesus. I will stop with this laziness in Jesus' name. And I will give. And then you go to someone to keep you accountable. Keep me accountable. Kick me out of the bed half past five if I'm not up to spend time with the Lord. Amen. Don't beat that guy up. But you're with me. Put yourself under discipleship. You're struggling with certain things. Give your phone to somebody that will only give it to you back certain times because you know the rubbish and hell is been vomited through your phone into your face with with chachas that you watch and see and this and that and connections that's not from God. Amen. Then have the guts not to wara wara for the rest of your life because you see yourself as a wara wara. Come into the place understanding like God said. First of all, he said, I brought you to myself because you're my special treasure. You are special. You are valuable. You need to accept that. And that place of accepting that, that's why as a child, I come to you as a father. And I choose to have respect for you. And out of the black place of respect, I will do it because you said so. I will do it because you say so. I don't feel like it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it as a prophet. I don't see why, but I will do it because you said so. You are safe under his authority. You are putting yourself, uh, yourself under the safe authority of the king. Otherwise, put yourself under the safe authority of your tantrum, or your this, or your negativity, or your positivity, or your depression, or your whatever. Or I put myself under the, my circumstances by reacting to my circumstances and think, I cannot do this, I cannot do that, because all of these things, these things around me, and uh, bow down to that, and let that be the final authority in your life then. What a waste of a life. No, God, only you, only you have the words of life. I mean, Jesus said, oh, do you guys also not want to go? 
when all the people left. Do you, 12, also not want to go? God, where will we go? You have the words of life. And so in the words of life, I don't always, you guys, we don't always experience or feel or see that life. But I choose to submit to the words of life. And life will manifest because the word will be fulfilled and word will show itself to be life. Are you with me? So as a king, you submit and in that place you are safe under his authority. And you stay there, you stay there, you pray the word, you read that word and suddenly the word opens up. How, how, how many of you? You read the scripture, you read the scripture, you've read that passage 300 times, man. And suddenly, something just clicked. Hello? And you can suddenly see prophet. King, stay there in the safety or under his authority as a king. And just do what he says, if you like it or not. Then later, you'll start to see what he's saying. You get excited about the word, excited about his ways, excited about his principles, excited about who he is. And from that place... You will develop, naturally it will come, you will develop a desire for his presence. A desire as a priest to be intimate with him. A desire that, you know, whatever happens at the end of the day, it's a privilege to honor you. I have a desire for your presence. I want to see you. I want to walk with you. But that desire to be fulfilled. I'm not talking like an alcoholic that has a desire to be set free. A guy in jail has a desire to be out. Wonderful. But is, he, is his heart in it? Are you with me? The, the man uh, in corruption, he has a desire to be set free. But the lust and the greed for money. He must first submit to the kingship of the Lord. So that the king can deal with the rubbish in your life. And that the authority of the word will have the final say, if you like it or not. Then you will start to see, he will start to see why. Not before the time, I want first to see why before I will submit. That's arrogance. That's arrogance. That's arrogance. Hannah's prayer, verse 2. Let's go verse 1. My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemy. You are standing with a lot of arrogance against your enemy. No, my mouth boasts against my enemy. Why? In my mouth is the word of God. And between you and your enemy, between you and the depression, between you and the negativity, between you and all the issue keys with people, is the word of God. So your mouth boasts in the word, with the word, and the word will deal with the enemy. Amen. Enemy came with the word to Jesus. Jesus came with a word to the enemy. He didn't just say, I'm Jesus, get behind me. No, he also came with a word. And he put the word between him and the devil. Now, if it was good enough for Jesus, I think we need that. So if you have, if you have something between you and the enemy, then you better bring that word. Okay? The sword of the Spirit, the word of God. That's in your armor. The armor of the Lord given to you the sword of the spirit is the word of god in revelation we see the the what's the two snade in the same as word double edged sword from the mouth from the mouth out of your mouth comes the word of god and when you open your mouth the enemy must because something's going to burn because those words from your mouth is like burning but too many times the words from our lives Burns people's heart because we are making mistakes. You, me, we all. Praise God for the blood. So that then tomorrow we can start over. Amen. And have faith that we can have a breakthrough. That we can have a breakthrough. He says, what was this now? Verse 3. Do not keep talking so proudly. Or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. Don't let your mouth speak such arrogance. Go and hear from God, what is that? Because pride comes before the fall. When you speak proudly, 
and it's about you and what you and you feel and you don't feel and you speak in that sense you are speaking your breakdown you are speaking your downfall when you speak in arrogance when you speak and you are the center of what you're speaking you are strategizing your downfall you are strategizing how not to receive your destiny with christ God help me that I will hear my words and that my words, my mouth will be filled with your word. Then my words are protected against the words from my flesh. May the words be from his word. Amen. Are you with me? And from that place you can live. From that place we can have breakthrough, my brother. Now with these, these kids of Eli at the end of the day. Samuel was always ministering before the Lord, ministering before the Lord. How are you doing that every day, man? What you do, you do as if unto the Lord. You study as if unto the Lord. Hello? You do, it doesn't matter what your boss is saying or doing, you do it when you are alone, you do it as if unto the Lord. Not when people check you up. Not when people check you. You know if you go for the break time before the time and have your own coffee at a, at a time and you can, and immediately in your head you're justifying. Why? Are you justifying against the Holy Spirit? Are you justifying against your conscience that God has placed there? Your issue is not with the leader. Your issue is with your own heart. Make sure that what you do, you minister before the Lord. You do your work wherever you work. If it's here on the farm, if it's in the city, if it's with your own business, what you do, what you do as if unto the Lord. That means you're ministering before the Lord, like this Samuel. And he became a very, very powerful man. But at the end of the day, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will firmly establish his priestly house and they will minister before my anointed always, always. The house of David was established. But ultimately, the house of God through Jesus Christ, the high priest, God established his kingdom and he is establishing his kingdom through the high priest, Jesus Christ. You are in him and he is in you. The high priest is living in you. You are living in him. May God help you, as you know, for you to do according to what is in his heart, according to what is in his mind. The word says, you have the mind of Christ and you do hold the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of God in your spirit. You have it inside of you. It's just my choice to be lazy enough not to open up the answers that's in here. Open up this awesome, awesome quality from heaven that's in here. Or it's my choice to waste my life on earth. Still go to heaven, but waste what I have here. So that what I have here, my children and their children will have to deal with Goliath and all the Goliath's children, all the Goliath's sons. Because he could multiply. Because I didn't deal with Goliath. My sons... My daughters will have to face those Goliaths and all Goliaths' children. For the sake of your children, deal with the, with the rabbis. Deal with the Goliath. Amen. Because you want them to go so much further. You don't want them to waste their time with Goliaths. They must go further and inherit the land that God has for them. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. God, and I pray that every man, every woman in this place, right now, that we will come and make that decision to say, God, we submit to you because we respect you. Forgive us for not respecting you. Forgive us for arguing. Forgive us for arrogance. God, please forgive us. Cleanse us through the blood. But bring us into this place of to be still and know that you are God. And from that place of respect, to submit, if we understand or not, if we understand and see what you are doing or not, Lord, we choose to submit to your word, because in your word, God, we are safe. In your name, strong tower, we run into that place, and we are safe. And then help us to sort out our hearts, Lord. God, and to get into your word so that as, a prophets, as prophets, we will see what you are saying. We will come into the place of seeing our destiny, seeing the purposes as we embrace the patterns.
Thank you, Father, that as you establish those patterns so that we can understand our purpose, we will come in as a priest into your presence, Lord. As priests into your presence. I pray that you will create such a hunger in each one of us. Such a hunger for your presence. Such a hunger to know you. To know you so much more. That I, we will lay down our lives and count everything as worthless to come into the place of knowing you. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that your presence will be over each one of us as we go from this place. And you deal with us further about this. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen. Let it be so.